British uh, CGI documentary series that they did. Um, I have like these little info guide things for Star Wars Episode 1 and 3, or Phantom Menace and, Re and Revenge, of, Revenge of the Sith. And then, the wildlife of Star Wars. Yeah, I have a lot of Star Wars shit, so <laughs> get used to it. Yeah, this basically talks about all the different animals that live in the Star Wars universe. It's pretty cool seeing all the different creatures and stuff. And of course, they talk about the famous ones like the dewbacks and the those big ugly frog things. And the Sarlacc. There's the Sarlacc people. Ooh, you bet you remember that thing, don't you? You always wonder what the Sarlacc, what the rest of the Sarlacc actually looks like. This is it right here. That's what the Sarlacc actually looks like underneath the ground. Pretty awesome. All right. And here we have Aliens vs. Predator Omnibus. I have, these are like, to my knowledge, these are the only two Aliens vs. Predator books released by Dark Horse. The only two trade paperbacks that are released by Dark Horse. These comics are, these comics kick ass. These comics need to be the main source of inspiration for the live action movies. I'm serious. The live action movies are pathetic. I, I, I liked the, the second one, but the first movie was horrible. These books need to provide any sorts of creational ideas for any of the two movies. They, these stories in these books, they feature awesome characters, awesome storylines, uh, epic action moments, beautiful artwork. It's just great stuff all around. These books are are great. They kick ass. Batman, whatever happened to the Cape Crusader, a great book written by Neil Gaiman, beautiful artwork by Andy Kubert, a great love letter to the le whole legacy of Batman. Same thing with Superman, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow. This is actually, this whole story is like the last, the very last pre-crisis Superman story ever written because in the 80s, DC was was completely rebooting all of their major characters. So like, Alan Moore was actually brought up to write this, the story that's in this book. And it's a very fitting love letter to the entire like universe of Superman. And it's a great way to send the Man of Steel off before, you know, before reading John Byrne's Superman reboot, The Man of Steel. Uh, a couple of other books I don't really care for. Ah, uh, here are a couple of... I'm also a big fan of J.R. Tolkien. The History of the Lord of the Rings is what that says. These are basically a whole bunch of books talking about the entire mystery and lore behind uh, behind Middle-earth. They're pretty interesting. Uh, here we have a Garfield collection. And here we have uh, two collections of comics called Citizen Dog, which is a an independent comic strip but written by a guy named Kevin Fagan. These are actually pretty funny. I, I read a f I read both of these a long time ago and they're pretty damn funny, I have to admit. They touch on a lot of social objects and whatnot. J.R. Tolkien's World from A to Z, The Complete Guide to Middle Earth. This has just about everything you'd want to uh, know in any of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, everything that, is, that has to do with Middle-earth. It's good stuff. All right. Oh, God. And I do have... Oh, shit, this is heavy. The entire collected edition of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, all three Lord of the Rings books. Oh, shit, let me pick this up so you can get a better look at it. Ugh, all right. Okay, now these three books, they're, these are all three Lord of the Rings books. In their enormous, prolific glory. And the reason, 
And you may notice that the artwork on the front of these books looks incredibly similar to that of the movies. Well, I'm gonna let me explain that. These books were actually released before the movies were. Now, what happened is that Alan Lee, the guy who wrote, who uh, there he is, Alan Lee, the guy who drew all the paintings and illustrations in these books. He was an, a major Tolkien enthusiast. He was a big fan of Tolkien. And Peter Jackson and company, there's my cat, the guys who were making the Lord of the Rings movies, they contacted uh, Alan Lee and another guy whose name was John Howe to basically be the lead concept and art designers on the movies. So right there you see the Tower of Orthanc, which is Saruman's uh, tower in the two towers. So they basically hired Alan Lee to, to, to draw the rest of the tower in. There you see the, the 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 city of Minas Tirith and the mines of Moria from the Fellowship of the Ring, all respectively, inside of in their own places. All right, all right. Now that I have all that put up, pretty much all the rest of the books on my bookshelf are nothing but Calvin and Hobbes books. I have just about every single Calvin and Hobbes book ever made. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not joking, I really do. <sighs> right here we have the book, The Days Are Just Packed. I have the Essential Calvin and Hobbes book. This is a very old book, so the uh, original front of it actually fell off, so I actually had to scribble on the side here with a marker. Homicidal Psycho Jungle Cat. Uh, the... What does that say? The indispensable Calvin and Hobbes come up with all kinds of weird adjectives for these books. It's a magical world. Now, um, like, there's treasure everywhere. These books, these like really sort of long horizontally shaped books, these collect primarily all the Calvin and Hobbes book. The Calvin and Hobbes strips from the 90s, while the, the bigger tall books, with the exception of this one, collect pretty much all the strips from the 80s and so on. Uh, I do have the Calvin and Hobbes 10th anniversary, which it's basically all the same strips from all the books except um, every one of them has a little caption at the bottom with Bill Watterson um, kind of talking about what's going on and how he got the idea to make the strip and whatnot. Bill Watterson's a genius. I, I love Bill Watterson. The Far Side Gallery by Gary Larson. The Far Side is awesome. I, I really don't need to say anything more. I love The Far Side. I'm real big into these old, like, sat satirical comic strips. I just love the stuff. It's The Far Side is hilarious. They make fun of so much stuff here. Ooh! And I got another Far Side. Ah, that one just fell down. Another Far Side book called Unnatural Selection. Yeah, look at that. It's a dinosaur smoking a cigarette. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, more Calvin Hobbes books. There's Treasure Everywhere, The Lazy Sunday Book, and this is a weird one. The Authoritative Calvin and Hobbes. Right there. Just strange. Yeah, but that's all the books on uh, this shelf right here. All right, now I'm going to take a look at this shelf and all the books I have on it. And I have this Obsessed with Marvel book, which I actually bought recently. Oh God. And here I have Batman the Killing Joke. Pretty much a completely necessary book to have in any Batman comic book collection. Ah, golly. Fuck. Uh, and right here I have this epic, huge Star Wars poster book that I got for Christmas. This thing is awesome. It has just about every single poster of every single Star Wars media ever created. I'm serious. All the all the posters for like the special like TV marathons to the the environmental um, advertising for like organ transplants 
for like the prequel movies and so on and so forth. The video games, there's a there's the poster for that really shitty uh, Star Wars fighting game, Masters of Terrus Cassie. Star Wars manga, there's a Star Wars manga right there, Ad adaptation for the Phantom Menace. <laughs> Star Wars rock and roll concert, you see uh, Luke Skywalker holding the guitar right there. Damn it, get off. Uh, you see Han Solo, Princess Leia holding a, a microphone, and right there you can see Chewbacca on the drums. I always thought that was real appropriate to see che Chewie on the drum set. Damn it, cat, get out of the freaking camera. Golly. Doesn't seem like those cats want to do shit until you're actually filming something. And of course, you have the Lego Star Wars. You have the Star Wars. It's just Star Wars everything. It's quite it's quite ridiculous. There's a teaser poster for Star Wars Episode 3, and that's it. Great stuff. I love this book. It's very nostalgic. All right. Continuing on, here we have Mass Effect Redemption, big Mass Effect fan, Batman The Long Halloween, a very good read, a few, uh, a children's storybook my mom got me, another thing my mom got me, here I have Superman Red Sun, which this is a, actually a very good book, a very genius what if idea, having Superman being Russian instead of, uh, instead of American. Let me read what the back of the book says here. Strange visitor from another world who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, as the champion of the common worker, fights a never-ending battle for Stalin, socialism, and the international expansion of the Warsaw Pact. That just says it all right there. Uh, Watchmen. I don't think I need to say anything about that. The uh, Halo graphic novel. I kind of got this real cheap. It's got some nice artwork, but it's not really anything that special. Uh, uh, George R. R. Martin comic book. The Hedge Knight. That's pretty cool. I have two of Spider-Man Marvel Premier Classics. I have this, I have this story, uh, Torment, which is which was a uh, Todd McFarlane's, uh, I believe it was Todd McFarlane's uh, most famous work on Spider-Man. Then I have probably one of the best Spider-Man stories ever made, Craven's Last Hunt. This is a great story, a very fitting end to an underrated Spider-Man villain, which is Craven. Ugh. Then you have I got a couple X-Men storylines in here. X-Men God Loves Man Kills, which was the the storyline that, that inspired X-Men 2. Barry Windsor Smith's Wolverine Weapon X. This is a, a fantastic book. If you haven't read this, you need to, because it's it's so scary and so disturbing and so messed up that you actually see firsthand what Wolverine goes through in his experimentation, and it is not pretty. It's a very scary book. Then I have like an Avatar Creature Guidebook right there, a book by R.A. Salvatore, A Thousand Orcs, it's a fantasy book. Ugh. Let's see, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur Clarke. The three Halo books right here. Then you have The Lost World. The original uh, uh, story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. All right, let's get. All right, 